It's recording as the, as the computer said. Um, okay, so everyone can see you um, right now on on the giant monitors, um, and I guess we can like you know pan pan it this way and, and so on. It's the classroom. So um, yeah, everyone, you know, give give a warm welcome to Matthew Rosa for uh, you know coming coming to speak to us today. Thank you very much. Um, so we're, we're waiting also for the, the audio so we can connect the, the laptop to, the, to, uh, to your audio because right now you're only coming through, through, through the, the laptop speakers. Um, but, you know. Can the students hear me? Can you hear me? Folks, can you hear, can you hear Matthew? Okay, most of them say yes. Um, but, just, you know, we'll, 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 we'll bring those. The, but, so we can, we can pretty much begin if you'd like. Um, so. Yeah, so I, uh, Matt, Matthew and I, uh, you know, went, went to grad school together, uh, Rutgers, um, and, you know, we went, went on different paths, um, but we, we uh, you know, have stayed in touch. I'm very grateful that you're able to come to, to my class for now for the second time, because you came last semester or two, um, to speak to the class about your experience with interpreting films and, you know, uh, and, and your experience with, as a writer. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I knew Ryan uh back at Rutgers as you said we actually bonded over a joke about a movie I'm not sure if we should repeat the joke it involves the postman do you remember that um I do remember the postman movie and I remember working on it uh I don't remember the joke though I got Gotham, I remember repeating it uh Gotham Rao said that he did not like Kevin Costner and we worked together on a project about the post office and at the end, we included a slide of Kevin Costner from The Postman. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is this is actually a, a class in early American history. And so we're doing a film about the creation or the, the you know, a recreation of the post office when we were writing a book, uh, re reading also a book about the actual creation of the post office, you know, in the 1820s, I guess. Um, so I do remember that. Yeah. I hope you don't mind me bringing this up. I actually do because... I'm sure that everyone here loves movies. I know that's an assumption and I may be off base, but how, it, raise your hand if you love movies. If you have one movie that you love, that you identify with, great. Yeah, for so me, that movie- A couple of people that just hate movies, that's okay. Um, but most people- You're like, a lot of, Yeah, and most people like movies. Uh, um, I'm sorry, is everything okay? Everything's great. I yeah, I was just saying most people like movies. Yeah, <laughs> in the class. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess most right. people took this class because they like movies. Yeah, uh, it's also Lincoln mm -hmm. Center too. It's like you know, I guess you have, we have a lot of uh, students that are involved with performing arts or you know, performing arts related um, majors. Uh, so but anyway, yeah. the re the reason I ask that is because Unbreakable is one of many movies that I love and that I have a personal connection with emotionally, not production wise. I don't know any of the stars. I don't know M. Night Shyamalan, but I love this movie uh, for reasons that are both artistic. I think it is a quality work of art and personal. I remember seeing it in theaters with my father. Um, he is still alive. I didn't mean to imply otherwise, but um, I have a bond as a result of this film. And then I got to review both sequels um, as a film critic for Salon, I now am a science, I focus on science and health for Salon, that is my focus. Uh, but for a time, I was a critic, and those were two movies that I got to review in that capacity. So I have a sentimental attachment to all three films, but particularly the first one, I also identify with its themes. I know that uh, Ryan sent out article, the reviews I wrote for all three movies, because although I was only actually a critic while the final two were in theaters, I was able to write a retrospective about the first film as well. And I identify with them because for me, the idea that people have a greater purpose in life, that creation is not just chaos, which inevitably means it is cruel, but that there can be something hopeful even when the situation is dark. I think that there are a lot of works of art which express the, these ideas, but Unbreakable spoke to me. And so as a teenager, I was able to enjoy it. And then in a professional capacity, I've been blessed enough that I was able to uh, work as a film critic and then you have the platform to share what I think and feel. Now, all of this is very relevant 
to writing in general. You have to love what you do. You have to feel a love for what you're writing about. If you don't have this passion, um, it's not going to work. It sounds idealistic, but I've been a journalist now for 10 years, uh, four years as a freelancer, six years as a staff writer at Salon, writing for a number of different verticals, which is a term for, I guess you would say genres in journalism. Uh, and if I love writing about all these different subjects, which is why I've been able to be so versatile in terms of uh, what I've produced, my body of work. In terms of this, I identify with it for personal reasons and because I believe it is a genuine quality work of art. So then the question becomes one of how do I, as a professional, as a critic, not as a person who is saying perhaps these very sappy things to a bunch of college students who will then make ironic jokes about him behind his back, not to say that they're undeserved, but um, in terms of actual professional work, what is the responsibility? And the responsibility, there is a formula to an extent when you're writing a review, you have to include at least one and ideally two paragraphs that summarize the film without spoiling it. Uh, readers are going to expect to know the basics. They'll want to know who the major stars are. They're going to want to know who the director is, if the director is prominent, who the writers are, if they're prominent. They're going to want to know in terms of genre expectations. Does it deliver on being scary if it's a horror film or making you laugh if it's a comedy? Uh, they'll want to know in a very basic sense uh, what the plot is, but without spoilers. You have to, I'm sorry, is everything okay? Hold on, Matt. I don't know if you can hear me, Matthew. If you don't know if you can hear me, we're we're just trying to get the sound to to come through the speakers for a moment. So we maybe make hold hold on right, for right. just a few few moments, please. No That's problem. Okay. Thank you. I'm not actually at the beach, by the way. Oh, wow. Magic. Cool. Thank you. Can you speak for us? Uh, Matthew, can you hear I can speak for myself. Uh, <laughs> I can speak for myself. Oh, thank you so much, Matthew. I don't know if this this makes a difference in the sound for you, but it makes a huge difference for for us. We could all hear you rather than just speaking through the the laptop. So thanks for your patience, and also thank you both for coming down and helping us out. This is awesome. You want to re restart the recording and re restart the lecture? Like, well, I don't know what we're, what's going on on your end. I don't know how much of what I said was heard by the class. No, I think I also realize I said re restart the recording. So clearly we can keep it going and, uh, you know, we could just edit the recording after the fact, you know, just to make it look like nothing ever happened. Um, that's always an option. All right. And uh, I think that, yeah. you know, most of us, I bet the Oscars wish they could have done that last night. <laughs> we were just talking about that. Yeah. Wow. Nuts. A crazy time. But uh, keep the recording going. I'm on a roll here with the one liners. Um, please. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah, the, it's, it's going. It's, it's totally going. So, yeah, this is the other side of the class. And you can see yourself on the screen there. And it's like we, we have a pack. I will these. say, I, I will say, and I'm not going to delve into too much detail here, but as someone who I'm a journalist, and like I said, I've been an active journalist for 10 years. I was a freelancer for the first four years of my career, and I've been a staff writer at Salon for the subsequent six. Um, I have written for a number of verticals, which I guess would be the journalistic equivalent of genres. I've covered breaking news, politics, culture, which is why I'm speaking to you now. And currently I write about science. I really consider myself to be extremely blessed. And I was, 
blathering earlier, apparently at a lower volume than I realized, about how I love movies. And I am fortunate that I was able to spend part of my career as a film critic. And one movie that I consider to be a favorite is Unbreakable. And I have a number of personal reasons. Uh, Unbreakable, as well as its sequels, is set in Eastern Pennsylvania, where I live. Uh, the movie, the first one I saw in theaters with my father, and then these two sequels I got to review as a critic. And I also got to write a retrospective about the first. I identify with the themes in terms of having a greater purpose in life and believing that this is not all chaos and cruelty, but that our existence can be part of a grander narrative, if you will. And I don't want to repeat all of that at length. I was, prior to the interruption, describing the structure of film reviews. And I believe personally that each review should reflect the personality of the critic. This is about you expressing yourself. You have an ethical obligation to obviously never take bribes. If you have any personal connection to the creators of a work of art, you have to disclose those things that should be obvious, I hope. Um, but aside from that, just speak freely and be yourself. Um, if you are going to mention spoilers, include spoiler alert. I will tell you as a critic, if you ever forget to add a spoiler alert, you will be reminded that you should have a spoiler alert. Put in a spoiler alert. Um, and I also described how you need one or two paragraphs that check the basics of what a consumer viewing this as a product would want to know. Because part of your responsibility as a critic is to be, in a sense, a consumer advocate. Obviously, this is nowhere near as important as consumer advocacy on issues like environmental pollution, which I cover regularly now for Salon. But it is still important. People have a right when they're going to watch a movie as a consumer to know what this product is. So you have to check off who are the stars? What is the story? Don't spoil it, but just say there is a zombie and it fights a princess and it all ends in Pennsylvania, which is where it ends because I love this state because it's where I'm from. Something like that. And then you proceed to try to organize your thoughts in a structured way. When I say be yourself, that doesn't mean that if there's one tiny detail of the film, you can use that to go off on a total tangent. You do need to, in general, approach what is important about that story. Or if you are going to go on a tangent, explain why that tangent is so powerful to you that it is worth seeing the entire movie just so people can appreciate it in the tangential way that you referenced in your review. Uh, and I didn't make eye contact with my uh, camera during that, but it's fine. Uh, this is all awkward Zoom etiquette anyway. At this point, I want to ask you, and you can be honest, I don't know if any of you read the reviews that Ryan sent out. Uh, I reviewed each of the movies. Uh, I reviewed Split in 2017, and then I reviewed Unbreakable as a retrospective and Glass while it was in theaters in 2019. Um, if you read those reviews or have, and have any questions about them, I'll be happy to answer them. I would also really like to talk to you about what movies you love. If you could review any movie, whether you love it or hate it. I've written reviews about movies that I hated. In my last lecture, I actually include two reviews for movies that I hated, um, Rambo, Last Blood, and Music. Um, and I included one for a movie that I liked, uh, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. I actually didn't like Split, which is the second film in this trilogy. So this balances out. Now, if you look at both of my lectures with Brian, you'll get three reviews for films I like and three for those that I don't. Um, anyway, at, Any volunteers? with that. If someone has comments about, about the reviews or, or if you want to contribute, you know, what, what, what film you love the most? Everyone has their yes. own favorite films. Do you either want to ask questions about my reviews or talk about movies that you love or hate was the point I was making. Or maybe you want to talk about the film that you hate or love the most in this class so far. That's fine. Is the problem that it's Monday? Yeah, basically. I think so. I don't blame you. Um, yeah, I was thinking about it. I, I really love uh, the movie um, um, geez. 
The Great Beauty. That's my favorite film of all time. I love that film because it's I get it has such a, a mystery to it, and it also is just like magical in some ways. The Great Beauty. I see a student behind you raising their hand. I'm sorry, could you come a little closer? I can't hear you. I don't mean to be rude. I just, I can't hear you. I did. Uh, that was an interesting film. What did you think of it? I loved it. I thought it was. What did you like about it? Honestly, it was so innocent, but like while dealing with such heavy stuff matter and it's like kind of based around these like very serious topics and like a childish kind of like resonated and I think what's your name by the way? Uh, Erica. Nice to meet you Erica. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so you were saying that it was very innocent. Yeah. But it dealt with controversial topics in an innocent way. In a, in a, in a, I just want to make sure I under I heard you. I didn't review that, but I did review Thor Ragnarok. Did anyone here see Thor Ragnarok? Anyone have opinions on Thor Ragnarok? Or Jojo Rabbit? I didn't mean to change the subject. I thought, yeah, go for it. Anyone Thor? Thor Ragnarok? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, I can't hear you again. That's a problem. I found it really entertaining. Yeah, I mean, you found Thor Ragnarok is a very entertaining film. I think that may, maybe that's a, that's the general, you know, reason uh, why why people would see it. It's just like entertaining. It's a it's a blockbuster film. Yeah, totally. Um, so Who what, what about it was to? entertaining, by the way? I'm sorry again. I can't hear you. Raise your hand. I can't just, hear you either. Raise your name and say your hand. Or, or, raise, <laughs> raise your hand and say your name, please. Yeah. I'm Bailey. Bailey Jones. I, I don't think it was very interesting. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, maybe if people have comments or questions, it will come up right here so I, you can see. I thought the movie was um, very entertaining, but not necessarily like substantial subject matter. Um, I think that's kind of like all the Avenger movies are just for like entertainment and it's like action and I don't know. I think Do you agree with Martin too. Scorsese? <laughs> Scorsese said that it's like an amusement park ride. Do you agree with him? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think so I, I, I do too. There's like some humor. There's some like it's just like easy to watch. So what would you contrast that with as a better example of that kind of movie? Something that would be more substantial. Good question. Um, I'll have to think for a second. Um, an action movie that has more of like a message. Oh, that's hard. I don't know. Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. I like that one. But I, I could. I don't know if that has like a very like deep message either. Batman Dark Knight. She's saying The Martian. The Martian. I don't the Martian. Like um... Alex Wire. It's based on the Alex Wire novel. I'm sorry. I, know, I was just trying to think of any other movies that were coming to mind. <laughs> I think I mispronounced his last name, by the way. So everyone on YouTube can tell me how terrible I am. But what 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 were you good? I'm sorry. Someone was going to speak. Martian. Did you want to say? I, don't know, I was just like movies that were coming. Up. What's your name? Diana. 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 Yeah, Diana Absolutely. likes The Martian. Diana. I like The Martian too. Maybe something like Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan. I remember when that was in theaters um, and it was kind of controversial because of how graphic the violence was. I remember there was some debate among parents over whether it's historical, whether it's value in terms of teaching history uh, was worth it versus people seeing very upsetting violence. I have nothing other to add, nothing else to add. What were you going to say? Uh, I just assumed you weren't old enough to have seen it in theaters. So I decided since I have gray hair in my beard, I might as well take advantage of it. Uh, <laughs> like an action. I 
I'm sorry, could you come a little closer to the camera again? I, I can't hear you. <laughs> no. Saving Private Ryan was more of like a historical movie, but it's like action. So that's why I'm like, maybe there's like more of substantial element to it. And then I was just thinking like more of like the sci-fi, like Thor, maybe like Ender's Game. But I didn't really like that movie. I liked the book better. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's a the fact that there isn't a necessarily a better movie in the genre that you can think of doesn't mean that your observation is incorrect. It just means that the question is, what do you think they could do better? That's their job as a critic. Your job as a critic is to ask yourself, where is this falling short? And then to the extent that you can organize your thoughts and put them in an essay format. That's the job right there. So if you were, for instance, been in that theater five years ago, watching Thor Ragnarok, uh, first, I would have hopefully been very polite to you, even though you're a fellow critic, so we're competing, and therefore you're my competitor. But uh, I'm just joking. That's not all what we're like at all. That was a joke. Um, but in all seriousness, your job is to think as a consumer advocate, who is going to want to see this movie? You're going to want to see an action movie. What are they going to want? You acknowledge that they would want something entertaining. So on that level, it does deliver. But then if it falls short, organize your thoughts and explain why does it fall short? Where could it have more substance? Why should people expect more than just to be entertained from a work of popular art? That's the job of a critic. I think it's also interesting though, because there's a certain like expectation when you go see like a Marvel movie. And I think it very much fell within those boundaries. What kinds of expectations? Like, you're just, like, entertainment, like, nothing super deep. Like, you're going to see, like, the heroes beat the bad guy. And there's going to be some, like, witty jokes thrown in to get a good laugh. But I don't know, nothing, like, Ragnarok. deep. Like, you're not going to, like, walk away being inspired, necessarily. Ragnarok, I have to say, was pretty funny, too. Like, the writing, I thought the, the dialogue was with Thor it was great. It was pretty funny. And the, Thor and, uh, and the, the rivalry with Thor and, and, and Hulk. Uh, that was kind of funny too. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty funny, actually, funny movie. If I may, Bailey, uh, it's interesting that you're talking about the lack of substance in Marvel movies because the Unbra the East Rail 177 trilogy, which is what I reviewed in the links that were sent out to the class and is what we were ostensibly discussing today. I don't know if, Brian, you still want to show the trailers, but yeah, they are a commentary on superhero films. And the commentary is in part about whether they have substance. And needless to say, one of the major characters of the movie strongly disagrees with your opinion. But that's the purpose of film is to have these kinds of exchanges. At, at its best, cinema is really just an enhanced form of debate through art. And this trilogy offers so many ideas that are relevant to the superhero genre. And by the way, it, the first film, Unbreakable, was released eight years before Iron Man, the first movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm sorry, do you have a question? We have another, I, another I, person with a question. You have a yes. question? Yes. Sure. Uh, well, just your name and so Matthew knows who he's talking to. My name's Alyssa. Um, and I guess I disagree because I think that superhero movies are great. Um, and I think I'm sorry, could you speak up a little? Sure, sorry. I heard you say that I heard you say that they're commentary on social issues. Yes. Um, and so the way that they're formatted makes it easier for people to like digest it and ignore it because of it, because it is supposed to be entertaining at its base level. Um, but like I guess Winter Soldier was something that commentary was a good commentary on like people's fear of the government and like how technology plays into people's fear of like its control. Um, whereas other movies like the Ragnarok itself is like a commentary on imperialism to some extent. And um, people have had a lot of discussions about how the Iron Man trilogy is about war profiteering and stuff like that. So there is some level of commentary, but it's like supposed to be entertaining. So you can't get too in depth with a lot of people. That's a really great point. Yeah, I think that's awesome. That is an excellent point. First, I have to plug that you, I reviewed, I, in my retrospective on the Marvel Cinematic Universe at the end of 2019, I had to pick the best movie in the MCU, and I chose The Winter Soldier in part for the reasons you just mentioned. So I, if I didn't plug that, I'd be a bad capitalist. 
Um, in terms of your observations, I think they're very strong. And I think the character in Unbreakable would agree with you. I think you would enjoy, I think both of you, both Bailey and Alyssa, and I hope all of you would enjoy Unbreakable if you're interested in these themes, because it discusses these very themes as do its two sequels, Split and Glass. Um, so my question for you, Alyssa, is what is your favorite? Actually, here's my question. You talk about social commentary for the better, but are there superhero movies that you think include social commentary for the worse? And do you think there can be negative ramifications to the political and social messages in these kinds of films? I think a specific example, I'm sure there is though, um, but I think that the like, lenient way it discusses some of the issues rubs people the wrong way. I know that when Age of Ultron came out, a lot of people were very upset about how the Romanov boys are handled with the fact that they're Romani and it's not touched upon in the film. The Romani Jewish characters have problems and it's not addressed. And then I'm sorry, like, I missed I missed what you said after Romani Jewish character. In the comics, they are traditionally speaking Romani Jewish characters. And then in the MCU, they're not. And then when um, One Division came out, there was discussion of like white saviory issues with it that people had a lot of issues with. Did you have issues with that? If you don't mind me asking. I didn't okay. watch One Division. I don't have Neither did I. I don't have Neither did I. Um, I haven't watched any of the uh, television stuff except for Daredevil and some of a uh, some of uh, Agents of Shield. And I think I probably forgot something that I watched, and then after this, I'll remember it. But otherwise, no. Does anyone uh, else want so, to comment or yeah. talk? And, and uh, yeah. So talk about either the film reviews or uh, or a favorite film or things they dislike otherwise we maybe we can uh, turn to those trailers so that everyone could you know before before you deliver deliver the lecture so that people know what, what you know what, what we're talking about in terms of like what what films what is that okay sound okay I thought, for you that is absolutely fine but to be to be to clarify i thought i'd already delivered the lecture i thought <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it sounds great. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, but we we can watch those films to give us some Absolutely. context about the. the I, I haven't. I, yes, I haven't discussed these three movies yet. I think we've had more. I think we did the Q and A first, and then we can discuss these three films. Uh, if, I mean, if anyone has seen any one of these three films, that would be. I just I'm just curious before we watch the trailers. Has anyone seen these any any one of the three movies? Unbreakable, Split, or Glass? Okay, we have a couple of people. So, all right so you're you're going to be my saving grace <laughs> all right okay so let's get those tra trailers going um and we can get going okay so the first one's unbreakable we can do a chronological uh thing those unbreakable split and glass Two reasons why I'm looking at you. One, because it seems you are the only survivor in this train. And two, to be a scratch on me. It's almost as if I'm such a plebeian, you know, to 
Okay, hey, that was unbreakable. We have split coming up. Next. I, I just want I just want to say right now for the sure. record, from my end, because of the audio issue, <laughs> all I heard was beeping sounds and various clips of dialogue <laughs> from the trailer. Oh, no. So all right. that, that's hilarious. This has been very entertaining for me to watch. Please play the other two trailers. Okay. I look cool. forward to seeing the trailer of Split to beep, 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 beep. <laughs> okay, okay, we can share the screen. Could you help me? It's the middle button. Oh, down here. Okay. Share the screen. Okay. Sorry about that, Matthew. Okay, now glass. No, no, it's split. Oh, split. Split, split. <laughs> okay. Nope, no biggie. You got, you got split. There you go. I think it's gone. The only chance we have is if all three of us go crazy on this guy. Maybe she can help us. Don't worry. He's not allowed to touch you. He knows what you're here for. Listen to me. My name's Hedwig. How old are you? Nine. I've never seen a case like this before. Twenty-three identities live in Kevin's body. Who are you? Help me get out of your head and get trying to trick me. I'm telling you. Don't you the clever one? An individual with multiple personalities can change their body chemistry with their thoughts. Someone's coming for you. Who's coming? The beast. Man here, he abducted us, and he's going to kill me. For something. Something horrible. Oh, always there now. The beast is real. Split. Wow. Awful things to people and do awful things to you. Okay. One more. That's the one I panned, by the way. I, I there were aspects of it that I liked, but I thought the content was problematic. Oh, definitely. Uh, it looked very intense. I remember when these films came out. I didn't know they were all connected. Yep, they're a trilogy. The East Rail One Seven Seven trilogy. Got it. And then finally, Glass from two thousand nineteen. Mm -hmm. Three years ago. It's hard to believe. It's amazing to me. 
It is simply extraordinary. Maybe this will all make sense if I explain more here. My name is Dr. Ellie Staple, and I'm a psychiatrist. My work concerns a particular type of delusion of grandeur. I specialize in those individuals who believe they are superheroes. Good for you. The three of you convinced yourselves you have extraordinary gifts like something out of a comic book. David Dunn, the only person to survive that train wreck all those years ago. I'm in security. You think you have superpowers? It's a feeling. Vision. Have to touch them. You believe you are a protector. My name is Patricia. I have no question. There are two dozen identities. I'm Mary Reynolds. <laughs> we almost got you, brother. That live in that body with you. But eat. They're coming any minute now, you guys. But what I am questioning is your belief that you are something more than human. And yet, it is true. My bones break easily. I've hit 94 bricks in my life. But you have an extraordinary IQ. This is not a cartoon. This is the real world. No way. And yet, some of us still don't die with bones. Some of us can still bend steel. I've been waiting for the world to see that we exist. Like meet the beast. That's a free respect that he likes you. That sounds like the bad guys teaming up. A lot of people are going to die. Don't do this. Are you ready? Are you cool, Lisa? First name, Mister. Last name. Okay, so now that I, I know more about these films, they almost don't seem like a kind of superhero trilogy. Um, is that a, a fair assumption, or or is it completely? I missed the mark on that. That that these no, films that are... is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. Um, I it, uh, to refer back to what Erica and Bailey were discussing. These movies are M. Night Shyamalan's attempt to offer his own commentary on the superhero trilogy. Roger Ebert used to say a famous quote that the best way to criticize a movie is to make another movie. Oh. And M. Night Shyamalan made these movies as an attempt to have substance in the superhero genre. Now, there is always a risk when you're ambitious. And the risk when you're ambitious is that you'll fall on your face. Many people think that he did. Many people think that Shyamalan's movies are pretentious and boring, that there are too many attempts to be intellectual, that there isn't enough action. Um, but if you want a more intellectual look at the superhero genre, I would recommend these movies. Um, so uh, I, I will have to depart shortly. Is there anyone else who has any questions or would like to mention any movies that they enjoyed? Yeah, anyone else want to contribute or no? Anybody? No? I think it might be it. I mean, we might be experiencing case of the Mondays right now, but that's okay. Uh, did you have some specific comments about these films that you wanted to uh, communicate? Um, I think yeah. this was, they were expressed through the course of the conversation. Oh, wonderful. Well, um, yeah, I mean, thank you again. I mean, I, I, if anyone wants to read my reviews, I, of course, hope that they will. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Ryan. No, it's quite all right. I just we were saying thank you again for spending the time with us and specifically talking about the structure and some, some parameters that you found with writing a, a, what do you think is a good review. Um, I think it's something definitely to consider. Um, most, most of what resonated with me is just like, um, what makes for good writing, it really has to do start with passion. You have to feel something for the subject that you're writing for. 
Um, and I think it's really helpful when we're writing about films, which you know can elicit so many different, such a range of emotions. Um, you know, so it, it, it can be a very powerful piece of writing. Um, yeah, the, the other thing I would say is it's like, you know, the way I think, I've never really written a film review like, like those that you've written, but um, I just know that they can take so many different forms um, and that the, the genre is such a strange one um, that can lend itself to many different styles, you know, so um, it just encourages students to really get creative and get passionate about their projects. Um, so, yeah. So thank you again, Matthew, and, and thanks for, for hanging out with us. Um, I know it has been, you know, definitely uh, educational for me, um, but I'm sure for other students as well. So thanks uh, thank for you. I hope, the time I hope you all have, I hope you all can get through this Monday. Oh, yeah, me too. Oh, okay. All right, Matthew, we're, we're signing off. I'll, 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 uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you again. Take care. Bye. Bye.